What's up everybody? Welcome back to Diesel Creek. My name's Matt. Behind me, a very, very cool piece of equipment that I just couldn't leave this auction without. So this is a Bucyrus Erie 22B. I believe it's a 1950 model. I have it on good account that this machine has been sitting in this exact spot since 1999 and hasn't moved an inch. So today we're going to try to get this thing running and operating and get this thing loaded out on a trailer. As I mentioned, I picked this thing up at the auction and I paid a little more than I'd like to for a machine like this, but I was willing to spend the money because this thing is in immaculate condition for the age. A machine like this is going to need a restoration, and if you buy one that's in much worse shape, you're going to end up spending the money on it anyhow, so may as well cut your losses and uh, buy something nice in the get-go. The undercarriage on this machine is in really good condition. A lot of life left in it, a lot of adjustment left in it. Somebody's kind enough to leave us a set of jumper cables in here. Oh, and some blaster. So this is a 22B, as I said, and I believe it's called that because it weighs approximately 22 tons less the uh, attachment on the front. So the actual crawler unit itself is 22 tons. The boom, whatever you have on the front, is additional. In this case, we're set up with a shovel. The same machine could also run a cable hoe or set up with a lattice boom for crane operation or drag line operation. So I didn't have a shovel. This completes my cable machine collection. So I'm pretty excited about this one and uh, can't wait to get this thing running and start scooping dirt with it. Well, my buddy Gino showed up to uh, get his auction buys as well as give me a hand with a shovel. He bought this 1926 Ford Model T, and it's got a 1919 year model engine in it. Uh, so it's an oldie but a goodie, and it's got some sort of a uh, kit on it that converts it to like a, a little bit of a tractor kind of thing. Some would call this a doodle bug, but I believe somebody in the comments will tell me it's not a true doodle bug. I don't know the difference, but uh, it's a neat little toy. Well, she's cherry, bud. Oh, yeah. So, if you didn't see the previous video of me inspecting this thing at the auction, I know I didn't show it very in-depth, you're going to get a better look today. If you've seen me bring back any of these other cable machines that I have, you'll know that Freeing up all these uh, controls here, all the levers, is often a pretty tall task and takes a lot of effort and uh, time. This machine, even though it's been sitting since 99, it seems like everything is still pretty free on it. So that's definitely a big selling point for this machine. For a power plant back here, we have a Caterpillar D318 engine. This is the same size engine that is in a D6 Caterpillar, I do believe. And it's got a pony motor on it to start that engine. Pony motors can often be problematic, but uh, when they're running right, they're running right. This one here, I believe, has a tight spot in it. I can't get it to make a full 360 degree revolution. Yeah, it goes to there and it stops. It goes all the way back around and stops. It's not hitting super hard, so Hopefully it's just a stuck valve or something we can get this thing running. Alright, so we're pulled the spark plugs out of the pony engine. Filling her up with some oil here. Maybe. Plugs look good. Hey, Bill. Yep. 
somebody put some fireball cinnamon whiskey in there. Maybe it's given. I can feel it. Oh, I didn't. That wasn't a full revolution. It's like 97% there. Oh, I thought it went. No, it's real close though. It just stuck right now. I just couldn't get it to go either way. Oh. There we go. That's it. That's the tough spot right there. She is free or close to it. Keep running her around. It'll probably be all right. I, I can tell you that's the started right up. Well, I don't think it's going to start right up today, but. That sounds like the magneto is what's holding you up, honestly. It felt like a valve. You know when you tap on a valve and it'll go just that teeny little bit? When I'm running around, it's what it felt like. And I didn't force it hard enough to bend anything. Yeah. Well, if we have to, worst case, we'll just, on the damper, we'll, we'll get a big piece of rope and hook it to boss. <laughs> I hear spark hitting. We might not have too much of a project here. Yeah. I can hear the mag snapping. It's good. Yeah, but you don't know where it's hot. <laughs> That's your only way to test it. If you holler, we'll know it's good. <laughs> I'm just checking for spark. Oh. I mean, I'm 90% I'm sure I can hear it, but... You gotta check your side. I have a spark tester. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I got spark. Oh, good. All right, Beautiful. Let me screw it That's a hell of a place to be with an A40. Yeah. That's... <laughs> Well, we just checked. We have spark, and uh, Dino pulled the yeah. sediment bowl off. We're gonna get that thing cleaned out. We're probably about ready to put some gas in this thing and see if it's gonna fire up. All right. Well, there's not exactly clearance in here for a regular gas can, so I just filled up a fireball bottle that I found with gasoline. We got gas coming out yet? I don't have anything coming out yet. Maybe if you pour it in, I'll blow in the tank and try to make a little pressure. I'm spilling it everywhere, so you're going to get high as a kite. Oh, it's running down my arm. I didn't even notice it. Oh. I, don't know. I got the compressor right there, too. We could we'll pressurize. These tanks are pretty hefty. Egg. Oh, there you got a little dribble. Not much. Well, I was going to say, just pull off that 90 and we'll 90 put a off. wire through it. Yeah. Yeah. So we weren't getting any fuel out of the petcock. I think that could be the trouble right there. She is plugged up solid. All the way through here, too. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> right on me. <laughs> all right, we got the fuel system back together. We got the sediment bowl cleaned out, all the lines cleaned out. We got fuel flowing. Gasoline spilt everywhere. It's time to do a smoke test. All right, well, that's the closest thing to an electrical connection we got. Let's see if the old starter is going to do its thing. Contact. Oh. oh, buddy. Yeah, we lost contact, I think. The crunchy. Oh. Oh. Back to hitting kind of hard again. Back it up and then let it. That's weird that it would lock up like that after it spun some. I'm thinking it's in the mag. It, yeah, I would tend to agree with that. Okay, attempt number two, contact. Gonna give her a little ether. Ready? Contact. That didn't sound good. That is odd. <laughs> odd. Yeah, that's the word I'd use. And try her again. Yep. Ready? It was really 
it close. Yeah. Yep. We should pull the oil back off. Good. Step number three, four, I don't know. Contact. Oh, she's ready to run, bud. Now, we didn't really play with the carb, and from my experience with the pony motors, you start playing with choke and throttle and stuff, you wind up screwing something up. They seem to have their happy place, and that's it. Yep. Mm. That made it worse. Yep. Go the other way. Go on, Jack. Hey, is this a case breather up here? Because it's dumping gasoline. Well, we got to pull one of these heads off here because uh, stuff ain't going real well. On these pony motors, there's a um, quarter turn valve that goes to the bottom of the heads, and you should be able to get compression out of that head. Uh, and that's like to clear it if it floods or something, so you can just crack it open, it'll blow the gas out. But uh, even with the valve completely removed, there's no compression coming out of that port. So. We're going to pull this head off and have a gander at what's going on in there. God bless electric tools. You wanted to go see more energy. <laughs> this part plug wire. Yeah, it's a, the, the plug wire is in a metal tube that runs all the way down here along the pony motor, and it's also welded to the stinking bracket tree on, that holds the fuel valve and the plug wire. It's all one stupid piece. That's an ignorant setup right there. I can see why everybody cuts these things off now. Almost there. There we go. No, don't engage that because that's that clutch. If that gets stuck in, and really have problems. It's coming loose. It's, I got it working loose by hand now. There we go. Yeah. Oh. I wonder if that's not a compression release, but a coolant drain. No, it's a compression release. Come look at my head. That's not bad. Look at the piston. It had squirrels or mice or something in there. Better pull them. Oh, sweet! It's copper head gasket. We can just clean that back up. Yeah, and reuse her. We better pull them both. Yeah. It's a lot of junk in yeah, it's just. I hope we didn't bend the. Yeah, connecting rod because. But I mean, it turned over by hand. So yeah, it, yeah. I don't think we should have. It already got bent before us. If it's well, yeah. If it's bent, it was bent before us. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't know. I. Yeah, we got a lot of digging to do here. I mean, the ports are all plugged up. The. Uh, the head is coming up flush with the deck, so I think that it's probably, or the piston rather, is coming up flush with the deck, so I think it should be okay. That was all soft material, it compressed real easy. Yeah. What about the valve? Okay. Uh, oh, the exhaust is, that's what it is. They got into the exhaust. The exhaust is full of stuff. Is it? It's all dropping down into the thing. <laughs> it just made the nutcracker routine over. Yeah, the exhaust, the valves run though. I tell you what, that piston doesn't look like it had any time on it. Yeah. No carbon built up on it, hardly at all. Like nothing. Hello. All right, so all that crap that was in the cylinder there was uh, apparently some mouse house. I don't know if you guys can see peeking out from behind the exhaust valve there. There is, uh, you know, those little teeny nuts and whatnot that mice love to accumulate, or squirrels, one of the two, I would say mice. So, I got the exhaust valve open all the way. I'm gonna try to blow some of this stuff out. Oh yeah, you see them all falling out of there?
Now we're taking off head number two here. A little bit of coolant and gasoline mixture there, that'll be fine. Oh yeah. She looks about the same as the other side. We've got compressed uh, mouse house in there. Clean that up, she'll be running like new. So we get that side cleaned up as well as the other side here. Got this head nice and cleaned up. Everything looks good. I think we're ready to reassemble this thing. Okay, well we got the heads bolted back on here. Everything's torqued down to spec. Oh, it rolls over so much easier now without all that junk in the cylinders. Ugh, who'd have thunk it? Come on, Jack. Hey, is what? the mag switch on? Yeah. Okay. A lot more healthy popping going on now. Contact. I think that's this stupid yeah. Bendix being engaged over here is making that noise. Yep. Come on, baby. Mag works. God damn it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Whew. I'm awake. Yeah. But honestly, as easy as the draw works for turning, it might start like that. Yeah, well, that's, but if the boom hoist is in, like, it's just going to keep wrapping the cable, in it? Mm, yeah, if it's stuck, yeah. But, Billy, work that clutch back and forth. Is that it? You said the outside. That's it right there. Yeah, that's it's it. It's stuck in. Yeah, there's something. Maybe. It ain't not going in. Yeah, it, it, that's in, that's out. In, out. So we got to figure out what's going on in there. That should be in here. All right, so the here? pony runs, but we have an issue with the main clutch here is stuck in gauge, which is wanting to turn all of our draw works and everything. And uh, that could be bad because we don't know what's going on yet with the rest of the clutches. If we've got other stuff stuck, these 22Bs are notorious for uh, getting the boom hoist clutch stuck. 
and that'll just keep peeling that boom backwards on us. All right, we're theoretically moments away from trying to get this thing fired up. I'm just gonna go ahead and crack loose some these injector lines and that way we can bleed any air out of them once we start spinning the big engine over, provided that we can get the master clutch free. Okay, people, it might get loud. Fire in the hole. Pulling the fuel rack apart, or the cover off of it at least. I don't think we're getting fuel. Because the big engine's spinning and it's just not hitting. I just hope they didn't mess it up. All right, well, my microphone setup died, so you're just gonna have to deal with the audio that we got. The fuel rack was stuck, we got it freed up, moving, but it's still not 100%. It's like the uh, return spring that should shove the rack to the on position isn't springing the thing in. So we gotta leave that cover off and we're gonna control the throttle basically with that punch hanging out the side of the rack there. So we're gonna try to get this thing fired up and see if we can't get it running now.
It's running, baby. the greatest right now but it is running to see if this thing is gonna walk out of this position here we're gonna have to do some uh, fun work with the boom all right well we got it running here now the scary parts coming up the clutches can get stuck engaged on these things so I have the master clutch disengaged right now so the next step here is we got to engage that clutch and hopefully none of the other clutches are stuck what happens a lot with these 22 B's is the boom hoist will get stuck. And as soon as you engage that master clutch, the boom will want to go skyward. So we're gonna get in here and just start bumping it. That's a broken cable? Yep, that's why it's broken. Well, that's why we're gonna do it. But we'll just back that clutch off. All right, I'm very fortunate I got some good friends here to help me out my buddy Sam from Scrappy Industries just showed up. He has a beautifully restored 22B. So he's gonna give me a hand here trying to get these clutches freed up. We got her, bud. We gotta get the dog off now. That little dog, that little round dog, lift that, lift that up. That's the, that's the dog. We're gonna pick it up a little bit. Get it off. Look at that. Yeah, bud, we got swing. Those clutches are tight. Check out Gino's truck. <laughs> we need to do some oil. Trying to get all the functions working now. We need to get this thing tracking so that we can get it walked up onto a low boy trailer. He's got her swinging a little bit. We're gonna have to shut her down for the night though because the auction people are kicking us out. All right, we're gonna try to walk this thing back and forth. Clutch is engaged. I believe this one here is our travel.
baby, she's trying. <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> seen the light of day in quite some time. tell what the culprit is but we got a tick in here that we didn't have yesterday so the motor's making a tick now and if I crack this injector loose it kind of goes away and it pushes that big tuft of air out there. I think we might have a bad injector. Da -da -da. Good old Sam from Scrappy Industries showed up with his super dog and the little boy. We're going to get a 22B loaded out. Oh boy, I'm excited. If we weren't kind of in a little bit of a high pressure situation here with uh, needing to get this out of the auction, we would probably spend a lot more time trying to get it maneuvering better and steering and uh, probably string a new cable on it so that we could really work the boom properly. But uh, we're under some time constraints, so we're just going to chain the uh, chain the bucket how we need for right now. The crowd cable's busted, and uh, hopefully we can get this thing walked up on the trailer. All right, Sam is the 22B master, and I've never even run one, so he knows the controls pretty well. So I'll let him try to get it up on the trailer. We all saw what happened the last time I tried to walk a shovel up onto the trailer. Sam knows his way around these things really well, so I'll just rather him do it than fall off and screw up another trailer. Oh, look at that, bud. I'm pretty happy. I think this is a really nice machine.
All right, Sam got her up on the trailer for us. Nicely done. Got to pick it up first, get it off the ground, and then we'll walk it back into the position it needs to be in on the trailer. What an absolute unit, bud. Nice. We're gonna close up these doors and then we are eastbound and down. That's something right there. I think we're loaded up, ready to hit the road here. Starting the journey home. What a sweetheart. Bit of a tricky turn getting out of here. He's gonna try to pull up that road straight away there and back back down here and then go left. I probably should have been ahead of him playing blocker for him, but here we are. Oh yeah, didn't even drag the road. I think he's good. inconvenience but we're back on track here we're choosing a different route now because we can't get turned around here I hope you guys can hear this truck that's Sam's restored 1992 Superliner Mac with an E9 Mac engine in it. She sounds ignorant. Well, we found a good place to turn around at. Sam was gonna take her down in here, but uh, I guess we're taking it down in here.
nicely done. Man, what an absolute sweetheart. Just listen to that old kitty purr. Still got something going on with an injector there, but I don't think it's gonna be a big deal. Oh, beautiful. She runs nice and cool. Runs pretty smooth. I think we do have one injector issue. Not a big deal at all. But uh, I think that's a pretty good place to leave it right now for us to string new cable. Got to get a manual for this thing and uh, figure out all the cable stringing procedures. These doors in the back here, there's actually three doors. You can only see two right now because one's behind that second door. Um, but we got to get those freed up and working. These doors over here are all pretty good. She's a really straight machine for the age. For a 1950, I mean, she's, she's darn good. So, so the ultimate goal for this machine, of course, will be to uh, get it restored back to working condition. And I'm actually going to use it around here at the farm a little bit. Just, you know, a funner, a little more fun way to do something rather than just grabbing the excavator. So if you like the video, do me a big favor, hit that thumbs up button down below. It really helps the channel out. It doesn't cost you guys a dime. If you want to take a little more direct approach to helping out the channel, you can head on over to dieselcreek.com, pick yourself up some merchandise over there. We've got hats, t-shirts, beer koozies, all kind of good stuff over there at the store. That's dieselcreek.com. Link is down in the description. But I think that's about all I got, guys. So once again, thanks for tagging along. For As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.